my loyal subjects and welcome today we're going to be talking about the vector tools in blender pretty straightforward i'm just going to add a bezier curve with shift a add bezier curve um, so anyway here we have a little curve you've probably used these before for things like chains and whatnot but i actually want to show you how to use them for metal work so go to your curve settings and turn on 2d 2d is significantly better than 3d in my opinion I found it way more useful. Um, so, with 2D mode on, nothing seems to have changed except we can't lift up or lower our surface. So I can't move it up or down. I can still pull it around, but it won't go off this 2D plane. The main reason why this actually matters is when you start uh, building your curve and you're extruding out and everything, and then you just go boom, and you seal it off with just by making it a loop. Well, when you make it a loop, you get this little 2D surface. If I go back to 3D mode, you can see it doesn't do that. So what I'm actually going to do, in this case, is I'm actually going to uh, show you how to use these in some pretty awesome ways. First of all, if I select everything with uh, by double tapping A or just tapping A uh, to select and deselect everything, which is basically what A does, and then we'll duplicate it, scale it inward with Shift D, and uh, yeah, you can actually see the behavior changes based on whether or not it's outside or inside another surface. If it's inside another surface, it cuts out, giving us some pretty sweet shapes. Uh, it's almost like a little ghost mask of some kind. It's quite cool, actually. I like it. Let's warp it a bit. So anyway, uh, there's our cartoon cartoony ghost mask. But uh, yeah, so you can create some pretty sweet stuff. However, let's play around with it a bit more. First of all, let's change these handle types. So all the handles are currently in aligned mode. If you want to change that, you hit the V key. Now there's a funny little trick in Blender, and this is a just general trick in Blender that a lot of people don't know about. Um, so there's this little underscore you'll see on the name of stuff. So for example, automatic has an underscored A letter. That's actually the key you can hit in order to actually shortcut to that. So for example, if I want to switch to automatic, well, on this menu, I just hit the A key. So I go V to open the menu, A to select automatic. So now I can hit VA really quickly, and I can switch all these into automatic mode. I can switch the entire thing into automatic mode. Automatic mode will basically try to scale your handles automatically. So I can't scale it, I can't rotate it. It's just based on where it's placed, it's gonna to try to figure out how to make a smooth curve. The next one I'm actually going to talk about is Vector. Uh, vector is kind of the same thing, but it doesn't keep the handles aligned, per se. <clears throat> it doesn't keep the handles aligned, it kind of creates this sharp point. So what it does, it'll point this handle at the vertice it's connected to, the handle it's the other handle it's connected to. It'll point basically both of these handles at the thing they're connected to. This kind of results in some neat curves and shapes and is worth definitely trying out and playing with. So I'm just going to select the tops of these, V, and then V again to switch it to vector mode. You can see we've got something else that looks quite nice. Now let's talk about the other ones. Uh, aligned, this is kind of the same as automatic, but instead of it automatically figuring out when uh, how big the handle should be, I can scale it, I can rotate it. This is what our uh, Bezier by default was set to. So uh, in this case I can say V, and in this case the I is underscored, so I can, uh, or not the I, sorry, L. Yeah, it's the L that was underscored. Sometimes it can be hard to tell, considering Blender's font, but uh, still not the end of the world. So as you can see here, we're starting to make something a little bit more on the interesting side. And uh, so finally, and I'm sure you can guess, there's free. And free is basically the same thing as aligned, except it doesn't keep it aligned. It doesn't try to make sure that these are exactly in the same orientation. So for example, I can drag, uh, if I switch this to uh, B and F. So if I switch it to free mode, you can see it's not stressing a huge amount about keeping them aligned. It's not stressing at all, actually. This is uh, kind of like what vector does. It doesn't try to keep them aligned either, but it tries to automatically figure out where they should be pointing. So as you can see here, I've created a little pattern. Uh, for woodworking, and uh, or metalworking rather. So let me just go in here. 
You can also control click to add a handle. Um, and you can also hit E to extrude. Warning, sometimes this does not work very well because it's just kind of dumb at times, especially if you uh, already have a loop going. It can be really weird. So anyway, um, it's recommended because sometimes like you'll control click and it'll double click and it's irritating as hell. Um, anyway, this stuff of that nature. But once you kind of get adjusted to it, it's actually pretty easy to create stuff with these vector tools. My mouse is a little bit glitchy, so if I'm misclicking a lot, that would be why. So anyway, um, as you can see, the vector tools are really awesome. So we've got the surface now. How do we turn this into metalwork? How do we do ornate metalwork for this? Well, if we go under geometry tab under curve settings, so curve settings, geometry, and we can scale up this extrude. Now I'm holding shift, by the way, to extrude this out. Now that's, I'm gonna warn you right now, these are a little bit glitchy at times. As you can tell, it's a little bit on the glitchy side, to say the least. And most of the time they don't glitch that bad, but this time apparently they do not want to play nice. I'm just going to delete that because apparently it did not like that segment. That can happen sometimes, it's not super common, but it can happen. So be aware of that. These can be a little bit glitchy at times, but most of the time, if you stick to basic shapes, Shift A, by the way, you can add some cool shapes, like Circle. Um, again, my mouse is a little bit on the uncooperative side today. So anyway, I recommend you actually model with Extrude On, but you can see I can just play with the handle types. We can add a little bit of a bevel to it. Now I'm going to warn you of a little problem here. If I scroll into the corner of the bevel, you can see even though I've made this a sharp corner, it's still using smooth shading on that corner. There's an easy way to fix this. You can go to Add Modifier, and again, remember that whole shortcut trick? Notice the E is underscored on Edge Split, so if I just hit Add Modifier and then E, it'll automatically add it. Once you kind of get used to that, you'll actually be able to add uh, modifiers and everything just super quick. And you get a lot faster. And um, yeah, it's just generally quite useful. I kind of want there to be something inside the eye so that, um, just so that there's something. So as you can see here, there is a neat little uh, kind of shape we've got here. And this kind of stuff can be used to incredible effect. Um, especially when dealing with metalwork. So for example, if I just uh, delete this real quick and I just add a circle and we can start from here. Most of your normal modeling tools will work. So I'm just gonna use this whole, uh, the V shortcuts and try to fight with my unresponsive mouse. Um, so I can select segments or handles. If you select two handles of adjacent vertices, hit W, you can subdivide and do all kinds of neat stuff. So in this case, I can go in here. You can select the handles and move them, and this will actually break them from being automatic. Um, you can do the same thing with uh, by selecting a handle on an automatic, uh, automatic type handle, vector type handle, etc. So you can just sort of start tweaking it, get a lot of your details refined in, do some really awesome little shapes and whatnot. And as you can see, we get some pretty sweet results right off the bat. So here we've got this thing. I don't exactly know what it is, but uh, whatever it is, I want to add a circle to it. So as you can see, this whole add sub thing is super useful. It'll add and subtract little bits. And then as you can see, there's sort of this general uh, shapely attitude you get out of it. It's quite nice. So, and just remember playing around with the different handle types, especially vector. Vector is super useful for finding cool shapes. So then once you've got something that you like, we can start uh, being a little bit more creative with it. So what I'm going to actually do is go in here. Um, I'm actually going to array it. So add a plane axes and uh, I'm going to add a modifier array, which you can do by just add modifier and hitting the A key. 
Um, or you can select the option, it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to array based on the object with relative offset off. And we're going to need to do a little bit of modification so we can position it. Ah, damn it, mouse. Left click. So I'm going to rotate it by like 45 degrees and then I'll array it a few times. So as you can see, we've created like a nice little metal, almost mace head or something. You could do axe blades like this. You can do all kinds of interesting little shapes. So, and again, just remember, always play with your shapes. Try to shape find with this stuff. You really do have to kind of shape find. Because we get so little opportunity to do it in 3D art. Take what opportunities you get to just find shapes in your mesh. So, as you can see here, this is really cool looking. And I'm going to uh, add a... I'm going to add a polysphere. I've got a little add-on enabled that lets me add that uh, automatically. Damn it. Mouse, respond! You can see I'm trying to left click and it's just not... it's ignoring it. I think my mouse, mouse needs new batteries. I already know ahead of time I'm going to have to add another um, empty object to get this to respond correctly. Rotate this by 45 degrees, and then we'll spawn it a few times. So as you can see here, we can just quickly play around with different shapes and ideas within our, uh, within our just little shape here, and we can start to create some really cool abstract art, or just cool ornamentation. So you can see right there, wouldn't that be a cool piece of jewelry or something? I don't know. You can see we get some weird shapes if we start um, shifting it a bit. Doesn't entirely work perfectly, but okay. Anyway, but as you can see, there's a lot of really cool shapes you can get. You can get very ornate stuff. And uh, yeah, so hopefully this has helped you out somewhat. Uh, play around with it. A radial array is amazing, and frankly, we just need an array. We just need a radial setting. Please just give us a radial setting. Like, really. Just add that, please. That's what I want for our modifier. Just give us a radial setting, please. It's amazing. Don't have to deal with all these empties. Don't have to clutter up our scenes as much. And, uh, yeah, so here's a sweet-ass mace head you can use. Or you can make these a gem material or something and play around with it, but... Hopefully this helped you, make some cool shit, send me some screenshots of it, and uh, yeah, I'm tired of shit, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go do something less tiring. I've been up for not long enough. Anyway, hopefully this helped. If it has, show me what kind of cool stuff you've made. And uh, yeah, peace out.